This video is all about the basics of healthy classroom relationships, the building blocks. Over the short course of time that I've been on this earth, I've come to the realization that everything we do is based on relationships, right? Relationships make the world go round. Now, your relationships with your students must be cultivated like a garden. Time, effort, imagination, all of these things must be summoned constantly to keep this relationship flourishing and growing. Our relationships with our students can allow us to experience the peaks of ecstasy and the low valleys of agony. They have the greatest potential to give us joy and cause us to grow and become more, if we choose so. In this video, we'll explore the secrets of successful relationships, and we'll seek to understand what ingredients make healthy relationships in our classrooms. Because ultimately, one person caring about another represents life's greatest value. When attempting to build successful classroom relationships, there are certain fundamentals that must be remembered. And if mastered, will take you far down the road of healthy relationships. The key to understanding relationships with your students is that they involve people. And while every person is different, there are general principles that make most people tick. If we understand these basics or fundamentals and operate accordingly, we can make our bad relationships good and our good relationships great. Here's my list of the eight essentials that I believe make up the basics of every healthy relationship. The first and most important principle of healthy classroom relationships is love. But when you say that you love your students, you're not necessarily talking about how you feel about them. As a teacher, love is much deeper than a feeling. Love is a commitment we make to our students to always treat them right and honorably. Principle two is a serving heart. Most teachers are in the profession because they have a heart and life that is focused on serving other people. They put others' interests and considerations ahead of their own. They consider others to be more important than even themselves. And this concept can be summarized by a really useful quote that I often use. It's from Zig Ziglar, and he says that you can have everything you want in your life if you help enough people get what they want out of their life. Principle three is honest communication. In any good relationship, you will find open and honest communication. Communication is so important because it's the vehicle that allows us to verbalize what's inside us and enables it to connect with another person. I mean, isn't communication amazing? One person is feeling one thing, and through communication, another person can find that out and feel it too. And this is a vital goal in good classroom relationships, to communicate, to tell each other what we are thinking and what we are feeling. It enables us to make a connection with students. Sometimes we are the ones speaking, and other times we are listening. Either way, the central tenant is communication, and communication for the sake of building the relationship and making it stronger. Principle four is friendliness. Put simply, relationships just work better when we are friendly with each other. Being friendly can cushion the bumpy ride we sometimes experience in our classrooms. Cheerfulness goes a long way towards building lasting relationships. I mean, nobody wants to be around a grump, do they? The fact is that the friendlier you are, the more you are going to have people who want to pursue longer and more impactful relationships with you. So cheer up. Put on a smile, have kind words to say to each other, treat your students with a great deal of friendliness, and you'll see your relationships improve. Principle five is patience. Students being students, we all have an awful lot of time for practice in this area of patience. Kids are not perfect and will constantly fail us. And conversely, from time to time, we'll fail them too. Uh, so while we have to try to have more patience for others, we need their patience as well. So often I think classroom relationships break down because people give up or lose patience. So we would do well to cultivate this skill and learn how to have more patience with our students. 
Principle six is loyalty. Loyalty is a commitment to another person. And sadly, loyalty is often a missing element in many classroom relationships today. Sometimes we just need to commit to being loyal and let the relationships move forward. We need a higher level of stick to -itiveness. This kind of loyalty will take relationships to a much deeper level. I mean, what a powerful and secure feeling of knowing that you have a relationship with someone who is loyal to you and you to them, that neither of you is going anywhere, even when things get tough. I mean, wow, that is powerful. Principle seven is a common purpose. One of the basics of healthy classroom relationships is expressing a common purpose. Working together, building together, failing and succeeding together, all while pursuing a common purpose, that is what good classroom relationships are made of. Principle number eight is fun. All good relationships have some element of fun. Now that doesn't necessarily mean like loud, raucous kinds of fun, though that is appropriate from time to time. Uh, what it means is that it should be fun to work together. If you're going to have a long-term relationship with your students, you need to enjoy it. Fun brings enjoyment to the relationship, and that is all important. I think that oftentimes this key element can be easily forgotten or neglected in our classroom relationships. The fun things we did initially in our new relationships with students, after a while can be taken for granted or simply fall by the wayside, and we stop creating the fun and the joy. So remember to consciously craft fun situations and fun moments, for these are the glue that hold our memories together and make our experiences in the classroom sweet. There are so many key ingredients to making and maintaining great, long-lasting relationships in your classroom. Each of the eight components we discussed brings unique dynamics and rewards to your relationships. Let's begin to focus on improving our relationships in these areas and see what we can get done in our classroom. The simplicity of this quote is what gives it its power. What is easy to do is also easy not to do. That is the difference between success and failure. So remember, the next time you want to put off doing the easy thing, get up out of your chair and do it. Cheers.